Hey y'all, it's Lonnie and welcome back to my channel, Lonnie on Life, where we talk about everything mom life, wife life, and homeschool. In today's video, I am going to share with you how we have revamped our second grade math block. So we started out one way, it's not, it did not work out too good for us. So now we are switching it up and I want to share with you the changes that we've made in the curriculum that we're using for our math block for the remainder of the school year. This is our first year homeschooling. Math didn't work, we tried it for half a year, not going too well. So we are changing our math block for the better. We have showed our way through math this year and we are switching it up and this is proving to be much better for us than what we were doing before. So I do wanna share with you the changes that we are making for our second grade math block. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. If you are new here, make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button. We would love to have you on our channel. Now, let's get into it. So in the beginning of the year, we started with Easy Peasy, All-in-One Homeschool, Brain Quest, Khan Academy, and Prodigy. So Easy Peasy All-in-One is an awesome, awesome free resource for homeschoolers. She shares all of the curriculum that she has used with her kids for free, y'all, for free. So we started off with math for Easy Peasy All-in-One. The problem was that I did not do it with fidelity, so I didn't stick with what we needed to do and go through it accordingly because I was kind of trying to piece things together and that proved to be a fail. <laughs> so I just, we left that out. The second thing we were using in our math block is BrainQuest. BrainQuest is, you know, very well known. It was a grade level workbook that has grammar, reading, math, spelling, all that kind of stuff in there. So I pulled out the math pages in hopes that we would use it in our curriculum for second grade, but that didn't work out either. We got through a couple of pages and yeah, big fail. All right, on to the digital resources that we were using. We used Prodigy as well as Khan Academy, which are both online programs. I like both of those programs and they are both free. Prodigy does have a paid option, but we don't do the paid option, we do the free option. The problem with Prodigy is that if you are not right there monitoring your kid, they're just gonna wanna play because it's like a whole kind of digital video game thing. And then in between, you do math problems. Well, there is no time limit onto how long they can kind of play in their little world that they have earned and created. Um, so if we would have a 30 minute uh, math session using Prodigy and in my mind, I'm like, okay, you can do Prodigy on your own. And she would tell me, oh no, mommy, I don't need you for Prodigy. And then I would check and she's completed one problem in 30 minutes. So we were learning nothing. The other online resource that we are using is Khan Academy. I actually really, really like Khan Academy because you can click on the videos for help if you need help and it will kind of talk you through how to do the lesson. Khan Academy is really, really awesome, but it took us a lot of time to complete specific grade level tasks on Khan Academy. But those are the things that we used in the first half of the year that did not really work out for us. If you want to actually see the products that I'm talking about, I'll link the video up above in the cards of our second grade curriculum choices. Just scroll to the math section and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. All of those resources are really great resources. I don't have anything bad to say about them. They just weren't working out for us. What are we doing going forward? How are we going to change our math block, revamp it, and keep pushing forward, right? Because just because it didn't work out doesn't mean that we get to stop. So I created some resources and I found a really, really awesome resource on TPT that I absolutely adore and I am going to share that with you now. So here is what we are using for the second half of our second grade school year. 
Okay guys, so here are the things that we are using to revamp our math curriculum for this school year. So every morning we do do some sort of morning work. It is not math every single morning. We do math three mornings of the week for our morning work. One of those days she is working on these learning subtraction cards. These are just from the Dollar Tree. We also have the addition ones. I couldn't find them, but we work on those also. I don't have her go through all of the cards in there. I set a quick timer for two minutes and we see how many that she can get through. Um, and these are self-checking. So even if you want to set the timer for two minutes and have your child do them themselves, then they can just flip it on the back and check to see if their answer is correct and make two piles, correct and incorrect, okay? Those short two minutes really help to reinforce fact fluency, which is something that we were really having some trouble in. And I'm seeing a huge difference just in working two minutes a couple days a week. Another awesome resource that we are using is this uh, Roll and Race. And these were created by This Reading Mama. These are free if you sign up for her website, I do believe. She has lots of awesome resources. So there's three of them in here. And there's a lot more, but these are the three that we're working through right now. So this one is roll and race missing add-ins up to 20. Roll and race, are they equal? And roll and race, are they equal? Okay, so basically what your child does is they take a dice, they roll the dice. All right, number two. Six plus question mark equals 16. They need to find the missing add-in and then they're just gonna mark off and then keep rolling and keep going. Once they complete a whole roll, then they are finished. Okay, another thing that we are doing every single day for math, this is a resource that I created. It's a fact fluency booklet. This one is Edition. It is available for purchase on my TPT store, Edition as well as Multiplication. They come together in the same pack. Go through. I read the facts off to her and she tells me the answer. If she can get them all correct, then we color in a star. Once we get to completing it four times, then we're done with that one. So this literally does not take that much time. It may take us three minutes per day to get through this. So this is a part of her endless word problems pack. Um, this is just one section. This is the winter section. And this is what we're gonna work through right now. So I really like this because number one, it helps reinforce what we are doing during our math time using Terra West resources. And I love that it uses different types of thinking. So what you can do is have your child read the word problem and complete it one way on day one. On day two, the next way, three, four, five. So one page could literally take you through a week if that's what you wanted to do. So in this pack, there are a ton of different subjects. These are just the pages from the winter section, but there is winter, Halloween, uh, summer, fall, Christmas. There's all kinds of topics. So it really, you really have endless word problems. Right, so here is the new curriculum that we are using for second grade. This was created by TPT author Tara West. This is just unit three. She does have the entire year available, but I'm just going to share with you unit three because that's what we are working on right now. Okay, so you get a second grade math scope and sequence. So this is actually the entire second grade math pack. So you can see what you would get if you purchase the entire thing. You are right here on unit three, two digit subtraction, and this should take approximately 10 days of, of instruction. All right, so you get a unit three table of contents. It tells you everything that's in there broken down by lesson. You get a look at the standards. Let's take a look at a lesson. So this is lesson 3.1. So in every single lesson, you will get teacher instructions. Now it is set up for a regular traditional classroom. So you may have to modify a little bit. I only have one homeschooler. So when we come down to like group activities, her and I do them together. But I love this because it literally tells you step-by-step step what you need to do. Vocabulary, the I can statement, what materials you'll need for the lesson. 
and it walks you through step by step. So let me share with you the do now. So this is Kimmy's math notebook. So here is the do now for the very first lesson. Definitely connects to her endless word problem pack. And so we just store her do nows in her math notebook. All right. Also, each lesson typically has some sort of game. So we played this together, spin and subtract. Our lesson was all about the hundreds chart. So we use the hundreds chart to add and subtract. So let me share with you the student notebook. So it looks almost identical. Cover sheet. Here is what she had to do the first day for independent work. Now, we didn't sit down and do all of this in one day. We did uh, one line one day and one line the next day because I just want to build that repetition um, so that these lessons are sticking with her and she's not just doing it one time and moving on. The next day, so see, we didn't even do all of the open number lines, but she had the concept down pat because this is something that we've already done. So we just quickly moved on from there, okay? And then it goes on and on and on. So we haven't gotten here yet, but these are all the independent work sheets for the student. All right, also included in the teacher pack are the unit assessments. So this is the unit three assessments. This is a pre-assessment and then there's also a post-assessment. So after you've gone through the entire unit, now you can check your students' learning before you keep going. If math is not your forte, there's also an answer key back here for the assessments. So those are the tools that we are using for our math unit. Again, it is going very, very smoothly. We have a little bit more of a traditional homeschool where we do have to sit down together and do things. She's not at the point where she can kind of just free flow. So here's everything that we're using. If you find some things that you like, definitely I'll link everything below. Go ahead and click it and grab some resources for your homeschool. Word about Prodigy and Khan Academy. We are actually still using those two digital resources, but I definitely am limiting the time on Prodigy and Khan Academy. So to be completely honest, we were almost using those as the teaching tools and I was kind of expecting Khan Academy and Prodigy to magically teach her how to do math perfectly and how to get everything together. But I noticed a major problem when we would take what we have learned on the computer and try to transfer it onto paper, either via a word problem or just straight up numerical math problem and she could not translate it from the screen to paper. So it hit me that we were using the screen way too much and she really didn't know what she was doing because she could always use the help button on Khan Academy or on Prodigy to talk her through it. She wasn't struggling through it. There should always be some sort of healthy struggle when you're learning a new skill. So what I've done is I made Friday's Khan Academy Prodigy Day. That is the only day of the week that she is allowed to use that math program. On the rest of the days, we are sitting down together and we are going through the Terror West curriculum for second grade and it has been working wonders. There are a lot of skills and a lot of holes that she has that we are filling in with this curriculum and I am just so happy that it's working out and I'm so happy that we found it. All right guys, that's all that I have for you today. I hope this video was helpful and very informative for you, especially if there is a subject in your homeschool that you are kind of limping your way through. Don't be afraid to reevaluate and go to the drawing board. Like nothing is perfect. It may not work out. So just Throw out the things that don't work and keep what is working and keep moving forward. See if you can find some other resources that can benefit you and your child in your homeschool. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Let us know what resources that you kind of had to get rid of for the year and what resources you are keeping. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. And guys, don't forget to check out my blog where you can find even more awesome content. LonnieOnLife.com